two years, took over president uh, after Joe in, uh, in May. And so it's my first time really going through it. Um, so bear with me, but I think, I think I got a good team around me, so yeah. Um, does everyone have a copy of yes. Yes. Off? Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. Um, so what you'll see on the cover page uh, where it says expenditures and income, that's our uh, <coughs> Cover that's that's our older format that um, kind of does a basic breakdown. Um, to start off, we're looking at um, a 9.61% increase over last year. Um, getting into it a little bit more, um, I'm going to run through some some changes that are kind of notable. Um, in the income section, uh, you'll see that our donations are down 50%. Um, from 2,000 to 1,000, um, and then down a little bit lower, various fundraisers is up 100%. Uh, we doubled from 3,000 to 6,000. That's just a line item change. Um, we did a really successful fundraiser um, that we think we're going to continue. Um, so overall, we're looking at a 6.3% increase in our income. How much did you make during that successful? Uh, maybe between our two successful fundraisers, okay. um, one being a letter campaign and one being a pie breakfast, okay. we made about twelve thousand oh, dollars. Um, we're hoping we, we don't want to count on that every year uh, because that was the first time we've done it in, in a lot of years. Um, but we do plan on doing it again, both of which um, from the letter campaign we made about eleven thousand. And then from Pie Breakfast, we made about 1,200, um, somewhere in there. Um, that's why you'll see 6,000 for the fundraisers. Um, and the donations we feel are just unwarranted donations. So like someone sends us a check and we um, cash it, whereas fundraisers are more of that. Um, yeah. And then moving on to admin, um, you'll see no lie item, various fundraiser expense. Um, that's to go with the fundraisers that we just talked about. Uh, annual dinner has a 33% increase, as well as uh, computer and reporting software right below that, um, which has a 30% increase. Uh, both of those are kind of just uh, out of our control. Uh, the cost of food and, and renting locations has gone up, as well as uh, the cost of software. We use the same software, we're not purchasing anything new, it just the cost of it went up. Um, moving down a little bit more, um, insurance is a big one. Uh, you'll see about a $10,000 increase there. Um, I will circle back to that when we get down to um, benefits a little bit more. Um, but beyond that, there's not a whole lot of increase. Um, that 10% increase is mostly due to that $10,000 increase in insurance. Uh, running down a little bit more. <coughs> Vehicles and emergency, uh, sorry, benefits um, would be the next one. Um, retirement went up 20%. Um, I believe that's, that's just the cost of it. I don't think we've changed anything. Same, same. That, that's due to the number of individuals that are enrolled and also the number of individuals who are um, collecting. Yeah. Um, so that, that, that number is all dependent on who's on our department um, and collecting benefits. Um, year and stipend is where you'll see the biggest increase overall. Um, we, we did this because we feel that a lot of our people on our department um, spend a lot of time 
outside of the responding as well as responding. Um, we did roughly 800 calls this year, um, with 300 being fire service and 500 being fast squad, um, which is our medical side. Um, we we also have a lot of uh, roles, so president, vice president, treasurer, um, vice or assistant treasurer, um, secretary, all of that. Um, <coughs> they spend a lot of time outside of of this um, that isn't necessarily reimbursed. Um, I know I spend 15 hours a week, 20 hours a week, depending on the week. Um, I know our treasurer spends way, way more than that some weeks and a little bit less some weeks. Um, but there's a lot of time that isn't necessarily reimbursed for. Um, so we're hoping to start incentivizing that. In the last couple of years, we've had a lot of problems just getting people to sign up for them. Uh, because if there's a big time commitment and not a lot of um, reimbursement for it. Um, so we decided to increase that by 18,000 um, with the hope of, of trying to shift our plan to incentivize those positions as well as continue to incentivize responding to calls. Um, I should backtrack a little bit. I don't know if anyone, does everyone know our system? Okay. Um, so no. we <laughs> Sorry, I should have started there. Um, so we have the stipend check budget, um, and then for every uh, two hours, you put in one point, uh, round it up. So if you put in an hour, it's, it's still one point. Um, and then at the end of the year, all the points are totaled up uh, and then divided by that number. Um, so on average, it comes out to, in the last year, I think it was $6 a point. Um, in years past, it's been three dollars a point. Um, so, three dollars for two hours, um, or six dollars for two hours, um, is kind of how it breaks down to. Um, so, so everybody gets the stipend based on their number of hours. Correct. Okay. Yeah. But the but the officers are going to get more. Um, no. So. Oh. <laughs> so we do currently have a plan in place where. The president or the vice president, or whatever, um, they get a certain number of points for being oh. that position. Um, I think right now, president gets 30 points at the end of the year um, for just being that position, um, which doesn't break down to a whole lot no. um, for the time spent. Right. Um, so the hope is to re uh, shift those to be more concurrent. I know we haven't changed those in a lot of years. And the workload's kind of increased. Um, our call volumes increased. Our workloads increased um, over the last couple of years. Um, so that's that's the hope behind that. The uh, the points, if you don't mind my cutting in, yeah. the points program <coughs> gives me, points sir, for the for the recording. Can you? My name is Nick Karbacek. I've been on the Berlin Fire Department for 30 years. I've been a town resident since '97, and I'm actually the, the initial proposer of the point system. Uh, years ago when we came up with this plan. The, the idea and the incentive of it was that guys, people, firefighters responding to the station were burning their own fuel, using their own vehicles, coming to the station and doing work. And it was to help reimburse people to, for the fuel used back then. And um, th so the plan was, was, a, was a total number of points for the end of the year with a fixed dollar amount to be divided up, and the more the people do, the more they get out of that portion of money. And that way it was a fixed dollar amount that wasn't necessarily by the hour or an hourly rate where, you know, an hourly rate with minimum wage costs and, and whatnot was, was, could be blown out of proportion with a, with a disaster event and could really kill a budget with a disaster event. So the points program was to, to help Pay the members back for the time that they that they committed to various tasks. So any meeting they attend, uh, attendance is kept. Uh, business meetings, trainings, um, in house of the department, out of house of the department, um, and people doing administrative work. We provided that they document and submit a you know a point sheet for the tasks they're doing. Um, it is submitted for approval by upper management. And um, basically, in any 
as long as what they do took longer, you know, an hour or so, they would get a point for that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to keep moving forward. If we can circle back to that um, in just a minute. Anyone has questions? Um, we uh, paid shifts is something we implemented last year, um, the last budget. Um, that's essentially on the weekends right now. Um, we pay someone, uh, two people, uh, four hours each on Saturday and four hours each on Sunday um, to be in the station doing some of the things that might not get done throughout the week, um, whether it be checking our trucks or um, doing paperwork or, or whatnot, anything that might not get done during the week. Um, and the hope behind that is that we get those things out of the way and we can focus our Tuesdays on training some more. Um, and in the change, you'll see um, that last year, last fiscal budget, 2024, we budgeted 25,000. Um, and in 2025, we actually dropped it a little bit and then moved some of that to insurance. Um, we didn't quite foresee a $7,000 increase um, in workman's column, which is what we had, um, which is in the insurance section. So we moved it to insurance and then bumped down um, the budget to reflect that. Um, so when we came up with the $25,000 number, um, that was for the shift itself, plus some extra um, insurance increase. Um, we didn't quite foresee 7,000, which was a, a bigger number. So that's, that's why it went down and then insurance went up. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so that's why that that number, that line item is our, is our for that section is our biggest one uh, with a 26% increase. Um, and then moving on a little bit more, building. Um, so our building is, is getting older um, and there's some more things that, that need to be kept up. Um, so that's why our building maintenance has gone from 8,500 to 12,500, um, which is a 47% increase. Um, there's also some things that we're planning on doing um, like the flooring in the hallway or the tiling in the hallway. Um, we've talked about doing the stain on the building, um, that kind of thing that will need to be done soon to keep it um, functioning. Uh, cable and internet um, increased by 1,028%. Um, our electric, 6%. Heating, 20% uh, increase from 25 to 30,000. Um, most of these aren't anything on our side that we've changed. Um, the phone, we did switch phone systems um, to a newer newer system. Um, but most of these haven't changed anything on our end. Um, they're kind of just uh, increasing over time. And then moving on to vehicles and emergency response. Uh, communications equipment has gone up. Uh, 33% from 7,500 to 10,000. Um, uh, everything's getting more expensive. Um, I hate going back to that, but unfortunately, it's the truth. Um, we have we have a plan to purchase X number of radios and pagers every year, um, and this kind of follows that guideline. Um, I don't have John here. Um, I don't remember what that number is, but it's it's similar to what we've been doing every year. I believe it was 12,500. Yep. The budget line. Uh, <coughs> the number, number ten, of radios and ten thousand pagers. Yep. Okay. Uh, I just don't know how many no, pagers that is. Videos that is. Um, and then our dispatch, um, four percent increase. It's year over year, four percent increase. Um, and then, which is out of your control. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, that is something that's set by dispatch. That's under control of the Capital Fire Users Group and um, the negotiations with Capital Dispatch. Um, you'll see a 30% decrease in equipment purchase. Um, we're trying, uh, last year in 2024, um, we, or I guess this year, um, we are trying to outfit our utility 
um, to be more of an all-purpose response. Uh, that's why we bumped it up for that one specific year from 12,500 to 18,000. We're just going back to 12,500. Um, we just actually, this week, um, outfitted that utility, um, which is getting, getting older. Um, and so we're trying to increase the lifespan of it, as well as our rescue, um, which is our primary response for a lot of calls. Um, and so we're trying to transfer, transfer some of the uh, response away from that rescue, which is a really expensive piece of equipment that's, that's starting to get older and starting to break more. Um, we just spent $12,000 repairing the uh, suspension and, and all that, and then a couple more thousand um, on the generator. Um, so that piece of equipment is getting really old, and we're trying to um, transfer towards utility and get some more life out of rescue. The rescue is talking about about 20 years old. Mm -hmm. um, our gear purchase, um, again, that's that's three sets of gear, I believe, um, for the fourteen thousand um, dollars, which is is what we've been doing the previous year. Um, and then another big change: hose testing. Um, so that's something that we try. We have been trying to do in house. Um, it went from fifteen hundred to five thousand. Um, it takes a lot of manpower, it takes a lot of hours to go through all of our hose and testing in-house. Um, and the hope is that we can have a company um, come in when they're servicing other uh, providers in the area and we can have them test it in one day versus us spanning it out and, and tying up a bunch of people and um, spending a lot of time. It's multi-hour, multi-people. So that's, that's why we increased that. Um, beyond that, there's not a whole lot of increase. Um, the vehicle emergency response section actually went down um, almost 1%, um, which is which is a nice, uh, nice thing to see. Um, I think, to go back, I'm just summarizing real quick. Um, we're looking at a 6.3% increase in income, our department income, um, with a 9.34% increase in our expen total expenditures. Um, so we'd be seeking a 9.61% a increase in the town. How come the insurance went up so much? Um, so that goes back to switching some away from the um, paid shifts which, again, was at 7,000. No, but I mean, what was the cause of the increase from the, from the league? Did they, did they say why it's more expensive? Um, so we, we don't use the league. Correct? Oh, you don't? We, oh. No. we are insured by DFIS. Oh. We're, uh, I don't believe we're able to go <gasps> to the city of towns because we are oh, okay. a private organization. Um, but e either way, um, we, we, with having people in the station, Oh, um, that's what caused the increase? Yeah, oh. yeah. So the more that we're in there, the more liability there is, and so oh. the more increase there is. When we went to this paid shift program on weekends, my understanding is that being that now we have people working as a paid, paid position that we're paying out an hourly rate, <clears throat> my understanding is that the insurance company looked at that and said, okay, you've got people actually working on the clock, and therefore our workers' comp insurance uh, took a hit gotcha. and then they increased the workers' comp insurance. Understood. Yeah, it's a, it's a double edged sword where it's nice to have people in there um, able to respond. Unfortunately, it costs a lot more to do yep. that. Okay, misunderstood you. Yeah, good, thanks. Any questions? Any more questions for the? Fire department? Yeah, Tom. Thank you, Brad. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's talk of, of a merging the, the town and the fire company. Uh, have you looked at the value of that with respect to this budget? Um, I, I believe that's that's a couple steps um, ahead. Um, I, I hope that maybe the merger committee can touch upon that, as well as um, the short answer, no. Um, 
I know there would be some savings in, in accounting and um, potentially insurance if we go with the league. Um, but no, not like a dollar for dollar comparison. I would think the constituency would like to have that number when, when it comes to that time. Right? I mean, it, yeah. uh, I think it would be an important number for you guys to yeah. have in your back pocket. That would be great. Yeah. I wanted to say that it was a good presentation and detailed and also I like that you're going to go forward with a letter campaign again and another pie breakfast because they were very successful. Yeah, um, one of the things that I, I personally have uh, love um, is, is community outreach and I, I love doing public events, having people in the station. Um, it also helps with the recruiting. Yeah. Um, the more people are familiar with our station, the more comfortable they are to come in and volunteer their time, whether it be an emergency responder status or just helping out with fundraisers like that or helping out um, with things like that. That's a very good point. Yeah. I would just encourage you that that it, you don't do these things in a silo because we, we, we have our planning commission struggles with this, our, our uh, DRB struggles with this. Is If we could act more as a, a community and so so other entities like the planning commission could get involved in, in this thing. I, I think we have a greater reach and different social media yeah, like uh, points. Yeah, so so yeah, keep keep that in the back of your mind on, on everything you do. That you keep you keep these uh, yeah. not just the select board, but these other groups involved. Yeah. In it. We, they have a you, you're probably not on it, but the, the the town has a distribution of agendas for these various committees, and I would just encourage you to get on it and. Okay. You can always delete it when it's in your inbox, but there may be something that's on it that mm -hmm. that is something that, that you could you could work collaborate collaborate yeah, with. Thank you. Great suggestion. Any other questions or comments for the Brown Park Department? <clears throat> Hearing none. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All. Thank you. Thank very you very much. much. I'd like to thank you all for everything you do. It's really appreciated. Thank very you. Very much so. Much appreciated. <coughs> um, Next on the agenda is the Washington uh, Unified School District uh, to revisit mailing the val ballots. Tour? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, we've discussed that the past couple of meetings. Um, I'll, we have a special guest with us tonight. I'll let her uh, go into the actual details. Um, but just some history, uh, we voted on this uh, December 20th, which was a delayed meeting from the 18th. We voted uh, twice in the bill, both times, um, with a shorthanded board. Uh, same thing happened on December 26th. We were shorthanded again, so did not uh, take a vote on that. Uh, so we're uh, with it again tonight, and I would like to turn it over to floor from the uh, supervisory unit to maybe go over a little more detail the uh, proposal and everything. So take take it away, Tor. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. And thank you for having me with you. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. I love coming to your offices and I haven't been there in a while. But it, I, I think you guys will receive, a, I'm not gonna read the language. I'm just gonna explain why I'm here. So in order for us as a district to send, to have all of our school ballots sent out, we need to have the agreement of all of the five towns. So right now we, Worcester, um, Callas, East Montpelier, and have already voted yes to send their battles, uh, ballots and Middlesex too. So I'm, I'm hoping that tonight when you have a bigger turnout for your select board, we could bring, we would be able to make this possible for our district. Expanding access to vote by mail has been uh, a major step for accessibility for a lot of people. I know that we don't always see as much of the, we don't have the data really it, to see how much of an impact this has made in our, in our district, but it makes a considerable difference for people that sometimes have no access to transportation or want to avoid lines. Uh, it just makes it easier for people to make their voices heard. And that is really important for us at Washington Central to make sure that 
we have as many people represented in this in this vote and we have done it this past few years so i'm really here to really beg you to make this possible so one t with one town withholding we wouldn't be able to send any ballots we need to be able to have all the towns in agreement in order for us to to do it so that's what i'm here for. And I'm happy to go through the language, but I know that you have it there, and it's basically we take care of the expenses, and our clerk would be, you know, it's, it's still some work for Rachel, obviously, but and it doesn't mean that you won't be open on, on, on town meeting day. Of course, there's some people that are going to come and want to vote there, and we can mail our carrier center ballots, so we still are, because that would require us to lobby 18 towns because i also sit in the career center vote board mm. so this is really uh, important and that's why i'm sitting here today with you just please help us make it possible since we had one dissenting vote um previously tour your your thoughts on this i'm still have uh, great concerns about the security associated with the universal vote by mail. Um, I don't believe it's a proven concept yet, and I think for the integrity of the process, uh, we should not proceed forward with this. Okay, um, any other comments on this? I was comfortable with what Rachel said as far as the voting and how, how it's handled, and I'll move that we approve the mailing of the ballots. Your second? I'll second. Any other discussion? So how much work is it on Rachel? At no, she's work? in favor of it. Okay. She gets paid by the hour. How much work is it? No. Extra no for it, my, it, sense it, is, no. my sense is there was really no additional okay. because the, the, the folks who okay. come here, ballots come here anyways and yeah. have to get processed. So okay. it's really no additional time. That was the impression I had as well. Yeah. Any other comments? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Motion passes. Thank you. Yep. Thank, thank you, Flora. Thank, thank, thank you for coming, Flora. Thank, thank you. Flora. Thank you, sir. To thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem. Um, this one year 25 budget highways. Did we get the print offs for everybody? We got them right there. Thank you. So, who's going to speak to this? And is did Tim show up? Yeah, he's here. He, he's okay. Uh, It's, it's all new to the folks to where I think maybe they're looking for some guidance on where maybe some of the numbers came from. We have some color-coded things there. Maybe we start with that. I am trying to figure out. Got it on um, sharing it now. Oh, great. <clears throat> is that coming through? It is, Tor, yes. Thank you, Tor. Oh. I'm not very good at this, though. I'm not going to. Uh, so uh, just highways? Highway. Yeah, so we're going to the highway. Okay. So, yeah, if you go down highways is towards the end of how do I get Um. There's actually a couple sections of highways. We break it down into um, summer ropes. Uh, starting there, 10 1 90 10. Uh, the wages for the summer roads, uh, looking at a 3% increase, uh, just like we're in the wages, just like we're looking at across the board. Uh, over time, uh, just increasing a little bit, which took to 2,500. Uh, road 
roadside mowing and tree trimming, uh, small increase of 12,000 even. Uh, chloride increasing a little bit to 35,000. Covert materials uh, keeping level at 15,000. Uh, summer equipment uh, maintenance and repairs level funded at 25,000. And fuel increasing just a little bit to 35,000 due to you know perceived increases. Uh, uh, we can just pay for that. Uh, moving on to the next section, which is winter roads. Uh, here again, the um, wages and overtime looking at a 3% increase in that. Uh, the blue item, the wages on call, um, that is where there's somebody on call, you know, uh, primarily on weekends. Uh, they're given $100 a week. Um, I believe that may currently be included in the regular wages, um, in which case it would just be a, a double up and can be eliminated, but just checking on the accounting practice, practices on that. Um, in the past, it was a line, separate line item, but I believe now it's incorporated into, into the regular wages. Uh, sand, we're keeping uh, level fund at, at 80000 same with the salt. Um, the equipment uh, repairs and the increase on the uh, winter fuel. Any questions so far? Um, moving on to Highway General, asphalt marking stealing. stealing. Uh, looking at level funded at 160,000. Um, I know we have about 97 from the so Pine Hill that we did not get done this year uh, that we you know, look to carry over. Uh, this may be one area that uh, we may, may want to look at in the future. Uh, um, gravel, looking at a level fund, a uh, small increase in there. Uh, up to 155,000, uh, 1,500 bridge maintenance, which is level funded. Uh, this is something we may want to look at increasing in the future, as as we did get some bridge reports last year, uh, showing some deficiencies. Nothing major, but I'm, you know, I'm I'm of the uh, opinion that we can be more proactive in this and take care of some some of these smaller items now and keep them from becoming. Uh, larger items in the future. Uh, Roadsides, level funded at 4,000. And same with uh, guardrails uh, at 10,000. Now the big item in red there, the 795,000. Um, that is a worst case scenario for uh, what we will be out of pocket for with our major projects from from the flood. The uh, Payne Turnpike North, we're looking at about 150,000 there, uh, 160,000. We're getting, starting to get some numbers from uh, Federal Highway Administration on that. Uh, plus, we've got the Darling culvert and the Richardson Road culverts. Uh, so yeah, that probably... We don't have to, uh, we're going to have to do the junction road, too. Junction road cover, okay. Uh, so then the last item, a lot of blue, that's uh, areas we're, wish, we're waiting on numbers from Cali uh, as far as the, you know, the workers' comp and, and the FICA and disability and all those items like that. I would expect there to be you know, increases in those areas, um, but not much, um, you know, just in line with, it, with everything else. Um, going down further, supplies, a small increase in there, it's from 6,500 to 7,000. Uh, advertising level funded at 500. Training level funded at 1,000. 
um, a small increase in telephones from 3,600 to 4,000. Uh, garage maintenance and utility, small increase from 20,000 to 22,000. Uh, energy improvements, level funded at 5,000. Uh, small increase in street lights from 12,000 to 12,500. Uh, same thing with the traffic lights, small increase from 2,000 to 2,200. Uh, miscellaneous level funded. And the same with uniforms, 10,500. And then if you go down a little bit further into the capital budget area, um, highway equipment and structures, I have in there 253000 for a new loader. Uh, that's been something that's been identified for a couple years now um, that uh, needs to be replaced. So I have um, plotted uh, money in there for that. So I will let Tim jump in with any comments he has. that back on to the FEMA side as far as like graveling some of these roads that we didn't get sufficient amount of gravel on we just covered them this fall um, but by the sounds of it we're going to be able to do a little quick math figure out how much we're going to how much more gravel we're going to need and then just kind of pad the they're still waiting for an answer if that's how they're going to do things through FEMA or not but so, not much for increases. Is salt prices staying the same? They went up a little bit more this year. Every year they keep creeping. Yeah. Well, it takes fuel to mine it. And everything. Well, last year when we had to switch companies, mainly because the fact that American Rock Salt went out and Dubois went out, nobody picked it up. So, without either coming from Massachusetts or Canada, Barrett's is really the only option we have for Central Vermont. And they went up, it was $7 difference last year, this year it was a dollar. So, but every year they're going up a little bit. Okay. Question. Um, just going back to, to the unreimbursed FEMA flood damage, the $500,000, and then the Payne Turnpike local match, or match, sorry. Um, could you just go back and explain that again to me, to her? Okay, the... Um FEMA doesn't cover 100% of our expenses on these. There is a you know local match, uh, just like any type of dealing with uh, you know federal or state governments. Yeah. So this 795,000 is a worst case scenario at this point for the uh, four you know major projects we have coming up uh, that still need to be repaired. Um, that our local share would be. The uh, uh, Payne Turnpike North, the estimate right now is 1.6 million total, which would give us the 160,000 uh, local match alone on that. Or does that include, include Richardson Road? No. That, that is included in that 795 
So my sheet says five hundred thousand. Am I missing something? Uh, yeah. Well, that's why I'm going at the seven hundred. Doesn't say seven hundred ninety-five. I, I see five. I may be sharing the wrong sheet then. Uh, okay, guys. That's why I was confused. So okay. yeah, I, I, I uh, so I did I did break out that hundred and sixty thousand from the seven hundred ninety-five thousand. So we, there might be two lines. I would say five hundred thousand and one fifty-seven thousand. Okay. All right. So okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I uh, broke that out into two separate line items. Mm -hmm. That doesn't equal seven hundred ninety-five. So is the five hundred yeah. supposed to be more? Um, no, it's just uh, better estimates of what we're looking. Okay. At. Yeah, Tor. Tor, I you mentioned a two hundred some k for a loader. That's total cost. Are you, are you, are you, are we, will you finance that so that's spread out over several years? Well, we're going to look to try to avoid financing that, but that is an option. We, I know we've, we've tried to get away from financing over the last couple of years. Um, you know, and here, you know, without wanting to get into the options tax and everything like that, yeah. but, uh, and, uh, you know, capital budgeting process, um, you know, look at the future. Um, you know, look, looking at, uh, you know, just taking, you know, doing the full purchase at this time. Any other questions for Jim? Yeah, street lights and traffic lights. Is that maintenance, repair? Is it a power bill? Is it a well, all encompassing? What is street that? Street lights, I can't tell you because we don't have any, as far as I know, unless Greenmount Power bills us for the yeah, lights that are around here for bulb changes or maintenance on it. But street light, as far as traffic light, is the hospital light which we maintain uh, Fisher Road and the mall entrance and um, they've been saying for a while now that that's getting to the point where at some point it's going to need an upgrade in the computer system it keeps going every once in a while it'll have a little glitch and turn into flashing and everything else but most of the bulbs Whenever they replace the bulbs now, they replace them with LEDs, so they've got to be really close to being out of all the old stuff. So it's maintenance and power bill all the way up the same. Yeah, but it is power bill. Okay. And that's correct on the street lights. That is the power bill from Greenmount Power. Any other questions? Hearing none, thank you very much, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Um, approve licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make a motion to approve payable warrant 24G15 with check number 23625 to 23646 in the amount of $15,477.98. <coughs> also, payroll warrant 24 15 for payroll from December 17th of this year to December 31 of 2023, paid on January 3rd of 2024 this year, in the amount of $59,444.91. So it was from December 17th of 23 to December 31 of 23. Just to clarify. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Um, round table, Joe? Um, yeah, so if you remember, probably about a year back, uh, Deputy Chief Allsworth came up and gave a presentation on communication. Um, communication, uh, let's say, grant that he was looking to apply for. Okay. Um, went through the process and just before it, it was um, issued, basically the state pulled back. And so we did not get that grant money to do the, the, the upgrade that we were working to do for now. Um, 
there was two parts to that communicate that conversation. <coughs> One was the grant to do it now, and also, you know, to then plan for the future and pay and have something ten years down the road. Um, so, Capital Fire is having a meeting on the seventeenth, and we're looking to have all the le you know legislators there, and probably looking for some support from our local community, the select board, to go there to ask the questions. And you know, this is this is important. Communication is huge. I don't care if it's fire, if it's EMS or PD. Um, we're, we've been struggling with that. Uh, with the PD and, and the new radio system. Um, so that's, I'm just saying, I would really like to see a number of you there at that January 17th meeting, which will be at Alumni Hall in uh, Barrie. At what time? 7 p.m. Thank you. Can you send a reminder? I will. <laughs> Nothing for me tonight. Thank you, though. Carla? I can't think of anything. I'll have to come, come up with something for next time. <laughs> Door? Uh, received an email from the town clerk. Uh, um, there are three select board positions up for re-election this year. Uh, Carla's finishing up the three-year term, uh, which is up, and then uh, Joe and myself um, with one-year terms. Uh, giving the instructions and everything on how to submit petitions. I think it was due by January 29th, if I recall offhand. Uh, also, uh, talking with Rachel, uh, you know, we had moved a couple years ago. The uh, town meeting, the pre-town meeting, will be uh, Saturday, March 2nd, starting at 10 a.m. Um, hopefully, the fire department lunch and following our actions, just keeping those states um, on your mind. I have nothing. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I make the motion to. Could I ask one thing? Yes. Um, just last year when we talked about Crosstown, I want to ask you guys tonight if that was come around sooner than later. Last year when we talked about it, I believe it was under the influence of it. you guys had said it was up to me as long as I gave enough notice. We didn't have to keep bringing it back to the board. Is everybody still good with that or should we revisit it? Probably revisit it next meeting. I think that would be good. I mean, it doesn't have to be right off. I was just, yeah. I mean, it ain't going to be anything that happens anytime soon, but, you know. You might be tomorrow. surprised. We, <laughs> just lived, we just lived through it a week ago. That should have been close. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the roads were breaking up. Oh, that was awful. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's select board Second. meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we adjourned. Aye.